leave it all behind you I said take down everything that stands in your way Don't stop believing it'll work out again My friend Stand out and be a part of everything good Wake up, you're gonna be all that you should Try out all the things you always wanted to be You'll see Cause I know what I know That you've got it in you And I see that you are a winner So they say, the wages of sin is death no. The wages of life is death. And death is bad. Why? You breathe your last. Blackout. You're gone. Consciousness over. You don't have awareness of anything anymore. But then there are organizations powers that be that want to exploit the fear that goes with that. The fear of the unknown. The fear of what it's like to feel your heart stop. The fear of what it's like to have the curtain of darkness cross your eyes forever. They want to exploit the fear of the unknown that we all carry around. They want us to remember, always remember, and always have in our heads the notion, the reality that we're all going to die. They want us to, re they want to keep reminding us that we're going to die. Because as long as we have the thoughts of death, of this unknown that we're afraid of looming in our heads, we will carry fear. And then they, they fuel the fear. They fuel the fear by making us think that there is some other thing besides just slipping away into darkness or some other thing lurking like a monster under the bed to drag us down, you know, into this horrible place to torment us. And they convince us that we deserve this, that we deserve to be tortured. You know, because we've made mistakes in our lives. The wages of making mistakes in our lives is consequences for those mistakes. In the real world, that's what it is. You make a, you make a mistake. They call it sin because they they give sin. They 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 give making mistakes this extra bad significance. It's not just making a mistake and learning from it. It's making a mistake and that mistake is just hanging over your head unless you do these things and that mistake will take you down under the bed where the monster is and you'll be ripped open every single minute only to be ripped open again and again and again because it never ends the torture and you deserve it because you've made mistakes in your life and so they, they take the fact that you've made mistakes in your life and they take the fact that you have a fear, a natural, normal, animal fear of ceasing to exist and they exploit it. They exploit it. They constantly remi remind you of it. Do you think anim animals grazing in the field, you know, um, peacefully on a sunny day are thinking about death? Or are they thinking about rubbing rubbing noses with another one of their own kind that they that they feel affection for or nursing their baby or just eating a, a particularly delicious spot of clover i mean do you think that they really give it much thought or are they thinking about the sun warming their backs and the cool breeze going through their fur they don't think about death they think about death when the lion comes charging out of the bush and comes running at them. Then they think about death and they run. But for every single moment in between their birth and their death, they're not thinking about death. They're thinking about enjoying life and breathing in the air and eating and savoring and existing and just doing what they're supposed to do, which is live. They don't have something constantly. They don't have constant 
images of a lion put up in front of their face reminding them that if they if they go down the wrong path or go into the wrong bush or lay down one second too long in the grass they they could be ripped to sh shreds so they live in fear their whole lives that they're going to make the wrong choice the wrong step they're going to take the wrong step and sink into quicksand they can you imagine living your life with constantly constantly being re remind reminded that one wrong step and you could perish forever not just perish not just die a normal death but be tortured forever suffer forever feel the lion's claws ripping you apart forever and death never really comes you're just constantly being ripped apart and you deserve it that's what religion does that's what religion does religion takes something like death and makes us constantly aware of it constantly reminds us of it and, and then they take something as normal as making a, a nice, normal human mistake and they compound it and make it so much worse. Oh, it's not just a, a mistake that you learn from here on Earth. There's mystical, magical entities in the sky and they're, they have a scale and, and they take all those mistakes that you make and they weigh it against, you know, all the good things that you do with your life and if the scales are wrong or if you don't take this magical carrot you know, uh, this magical fix it all. You're gonna, you're gonna not only die, but you're gonna suffer forever. You know, this is kind of like um, a sociopathic kind of thing. Sociopaths prey on victim mentality. Sociopaths prey on victims. Are you a victim? Do you walk around thinking of yourself as a victim? because if you are very likely you're going to be ensnared by a sociopath and that sociopath can be a person it can be a person that you think is really popular and oh my gosh you're so excited that this popular person likes you or it could be the religion that tells you that you know you you are a bad person because you've made mistakes you're a bad person just because you were born in the first place you're a bad person Unless you eat their carrot, you take the carrot, or, or do all the things that they tell you you need to do. Or the sociopath friend who tells you that, you know, well, yeah, you know, but you're, you're, not, you're not exactly right because, um, <sighs> you know, you eat too perfectly. I, I had this guy that took, I took care of who was sick criticized me for the weirdest things. And one of the things he criticized me for was I didn't chew with my mouth open. I mean, every, 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 <laughs> I guess every now and then you're supposed to chew with your mouth open, otherwise it's weird that you're, you know, that you, the way you're eating is weird. <laughs> I mean, just weird things like that. Social pezzer, they, 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 they go after your self-esteem. They go after your self-esteem. They tell you that you're broken. They tell you that the reason why you need to be better, the things that you need to fix about yourself. That's what sociopaths do. And they go after people who are victims, who walk around seeing themselves as victims. The church does this too. They prey on alcoholics. You know, AA promotes Christianity and belief in God. I'm pretty sure there's a reason why. Because the people that are in that organization are at their lowest low. They're, they're victims, they're vulnerable, they see themselves as broken and in need of repair, and oh, along comes AA. Here, here's our fix-it-all. Believe in God and everything will be better. He will make you strong enough to overcome this horrible addiction. So what is the sociopath prey on, or count on, maybe, I should, should say? Your insecurities. Sociopath is usually very popular, uh, has a desirable um, face, desirable way, very charming, uh, draws people to him or her. And then, oh, you feel like, you know, they want to be your friend. They want to be accepting of you, but there's just there's certain things that you need to change. You're not quite right, you know. <laughs> I feel like the, the church mimics the sociopath behavior. 
I feel like religion mimics that. It's like, well, Jesus loves you so much, except, you know, <laughs> you know, God loves you just the way you are, except there's just, <laughs> you're going to be thrown in hell unless you change the way you are. Um, I feel like one of the things that fends off a sociopath, and maybe it'll fend off the church, or at least, I don't know, victim mentality, seeing yourself as a victim, feeling deep down inside, like, yeah, you know, I have all this guilt. Guilt about what? Making a human mistake? Because that's what the church tries to exploit. That's what religion tries to exploit. That's the first thing that they go f for. That's your weak spot. Oh, did you know? By the way, did you know that you've made mistakes in your life? <gasps> you know, we really love you, but you've made these horrible mistakes and you deserve to be tortured forever unless you accept our little carrot. You know? Oh, the sociopath really wants to be your friend. Uh, but you have to really work hard to get him to be your friend. You have to do things for him. You have to bend over backwards to please him improve yourself, you know? Well, the church, religion, Jesus loves you unconditionally. He made you. He knows everything about you. And He loves you, except you're not. You have to constantly apologize and grovel for the rest of your life. Every time you make a mistake, you better remember to ask for forgiveness. You have to be in a constant state of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not good enough. Oh, I need your, I need your, your holy ab whatever to absolve me. I need you to wash me clean with your holy blood, whatever. It's disgusting. I feel like the thing that led me to Christianity was victim mentality. Feeling, seeing myself as not good enough. Readily agreeing with the first people that came along and said, you know, you really need this to be good. You really need this crutch to be a whole person. You're certainly not good enough all by yourself. You're cer you certainly weren't born good. You need this. Victim mentality. People who have been victims, people who have been used or hurt in their lives or abused in their lives tend to have it more than others who have had the luck and not been victimized. People who have had bad things happen. Child abuse, spousal abuse, sociopaths preying on them when they're down. It's easier for them to be, to walk around with their head down, seeing themselves as, oh, I've been damaged, I've been abused, I, I'm i not a whole person anymore. And you know what's funny is that whole, that whole attitude towards self is reflected clear as a bell to any sociopath who looks at you. They know. They just know. They see damaged goods when they see you because that's what you put off. You put off like like you have a neon sign on your forehead, victim, come and screw me. I need to be screwed. This is what I'm used to. This is familiar. I won't feel like the world is right unless I have somebody fucking me over. Yeah, seeing yourself as a victim makes you a victim. Walking around with the attitude, oh, I, I'm fucked up because I've been hurt. Um, the reason I'm this way is because I've been hurt. I'm a victim, you know, and I'm, I'm an adult child now and because I was hurt when I was a kid and da-da-da-da-da. You know, you make, you make yourself continue to be a victim by doing that you would you draw more predators to you that way you would draw you draw people who want to exploit your weakness they want to exploit what you see as flaws in yourself that's what they do and i think i think the church religion is just another sociopath just another bully that's what they do that's what they look for in people and if they can't find it then they bully it out of you hey have you ever lied have you ever, have you ever stolen? Have you ever, ooh, looked at somebody and wanted to have sex with them? Oh, man, you're a bad person. Have you ever said, God damn it, oh my gosh, you deserve to go to hell. That's what they do. They, if you think you're a good person, if you think you're whole and complete and wonderful, you know, if they don't see the word victim on your forehead, they're going to try to make it appear. They're going to bring back, they're going to remind you of all the mistakes that you've ever made. 
and convince you that, ooh, you're really not such a good person and you need their little carrot. So I know this, vi this video sounds a lot like one I, I just made one recently, very similar message, but I think what I'm trying to say with this one is victim mentality only hurts you. Letting, letting that whole, perceiving yourself as a victim after you've been abused or hurt or whatever, walking around, oh, well, I'm this way because this happened to me, da-da-da-da-da. You're attracting more bad to yourself. You're drawing more predators to you by doing that. By continuing to be, by allowing yourself to continue to be cast as the victim. By seeing yourself in the role of a victim, you continue to be a victim and you continue to be victimized. I think that even, you might not fend off the people knocking at your door. You might not fend off all the Christians who want to look down their noses at you and tell you that you're that you're you're lost, you know, because you don't believe what they do. You might not fend those people off. They might still come at you and try to make you feel, you know, remind you of all the things that you've done wrong in your life. They might still show up. But if you don't if you don't continue to feel like you know, if you if you don't continue to feed this thing inside you that tells you that you're a victim or reminds you of how bad you've been treated, you know if you don't continue to feed that, if you shake it off, you know if you say you know what I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be a victim anymore. Yeah, that's really too bad that that happened to me. Yeah, it's really too bad that I didn't have any control over that situation and that or you know maybe I did but I made the wrong choices and as a result I was hurt. I was victimized, I was used, I was abused, whatever. It's really too bad these things happened to me. But I can't go back and change it. I can't change it. You know, it's it's too bad it happened, but it's also helped to make me the person I am today. You know, really. Bad things are bad, but they do make a difference in your life. They affect you. Everything that happens to you, good or bad, affects you and makes you, molds you into who you are in this moment. And, you know, if you, if you hate the bad that happened to you, if you, if you, you know, first of all, you're giving it power over you. You're continuing to give it power over you. The guy or woman who abused you 10 years ago is still abusing you today because you're still giving them that power. You're still letting them victimize you. You know, because you're continuing to walk around feeling and casting yourself in the role of the victim and drawing more predators to you. So my my little piece of advice, and it's taken me a really long time to say, is to be a stronger person, I think, to be able to laugh in the face of these people that want to tell you that you're not good enough. Stop accepting this title that they've put on you. Stop accepting Stop looking in the mirror and seeing the abused child, the abused victim, the, the person who had no power over what happened, you know, and no control and certainly no blame over something that happened to you when you, I mean, sorry, but nobody deserves abuse. Nobody asks to be abused. And if it happens to you, it's a bad thing, but you don't have to let it define who you are. And the moment you stop, the moment you stop rejecting that self-perception, the moment you stop saying, no, I'm not a victim anymore. Okay, I was a victim. God damn it. I was a victim. I had a horrible time. This was really bad for me. The moment you stop saying, okay, but that, that was then. This is now. I'm not a victim anymore. I've learned from that. I'm a stronger person. I know now I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to be on the lookout for that. But I deserve better. I don't deserve that. I'm not going to, you know, I'm sorry. That, but that didn't, that wasn't supposed to, that wasn't right what happened to me. And I didn't deserve it. And you don't deserve it. And you don't deserve a religion that is constantly telling you that you can't, you can't be good enough unless you do this and this and this. You don't deserve that either. You don't deserve a religion that tells you that if you're dirt poor, you should still give them money. You know, or if you're hurting and they tell you, well, take it to Jesus, pray more. Don't, don't lean on me. Don't, don't try to come to me, your friend, for a little support and encouragement. No, go pray more. Don't come to me, your mom or dad, you know, for advice and, and encouragement. Go pray more. Like you don't even deserve 
simple things like parental love or the love of a friend. Anyway, I have a kitty cat here. Um, see, there she is. There she is. There's mischiefs here. Yeah. Anyway, I gotta go. I just, I just felt like making a video because I think there's a lot of victims out there. I think the re the reason religion is so powerful in this world and has such a sway on this world is there's so many people that either are victims or easily convinced that they are bad. <laughs> and you're not bad. Mistakes happen, you learn from them, you move on. That's all it is. So anyway, if you've been watching, thanks. Bye. I am uh, absolutely convinced that the main source of hatred in the world is religion. And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. Share the same